Here's your feminist news wrap for the week gone by. The Ministry of Defence has issued the formal government sanction letter for grant of permanent commission to women officers in the Indian Army, paving the way for empowering women officers to shoulder larger responsibilities in the organisation, said an Indian Army spokesperson. The order specifies grant of permanent commission to short service commissioned women officers in all 10 streams of the Indian Army. The murder of a 27-year-old woman by an ex-boyfriend has sparked outrage in Turkey, shining a light on the country's shockingly high femicide rate and government efforts to roll back legislation designed to protect women from gender-based violence. According to a 2009 study on prevention strategies, 42% of Turkish women aged between 15 and 60 had suffered some physical or sexual violence by their husbands or partners. India has successfully brought down the maternal mortality ratio by nine points in one year, as per data released by the Registrar-General of India. Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh are among the states that have shown the most decline. According to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, India has been witnessing a progressive decline in maternal mortality. A paper written by Ashwini Deshpande, a professor of economics at Ashoka University, revealed gender and caste disparities in early lockdown-induced job losses. While women had suffered relatively more than men, rural women had suffered more than urban women and Dalits more than upper castes. Women who were employed pre-lockdown are 23.5 percent points less likely to be employed post-lockdown than men. A 14-year-old girl who was undergoing treatment at Sardar Patel Covid Care Centre in South Delhi's Chhatarpur was sexually assaulted by another Covid-19 patient, the police said. The incident took place on the night of July 15th when the girl had gone to the washroom. The 19-year-old man who sexually assaulted her was arrested along with one of his associates. The associate is accused of standing guard and filming the assault on his mobile phone. A year after Kerala Catholic priest Robin Vadakamcheri was sentenced to 20 years in jail for raping and impregnating a minor girl, he has now moved to Kerala High Court to marry the survivor and take care of the child born to her. The convict has approached the court seeking two months' bail to prepare for the wedding. The prosecution has denied this suggestion and said it could be a ploy to get relaxation of the 20-year prison term. 